So today I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about freeze dryers and if you should get one. Just finished a batch of uh, tuna fish and chicken. Canned chicken. Tuna fish. So should you buy a freeze dryer? So we bought our first machine in um, 2015, 2016, a medium freeze dryer. We have since got rid of that. In 2017, we purchased uh, two large freeze drying machines. So we thought we were going to be uh, making a business out of it, but uh, found out like high cost, limited production, like it, you can only do so much in a batch. Um, and it's a time consuming process, complicated process, and uses a lot of electricity. It's essentially we ended up outsourcing our product. So for example, we're the inventors of the, the Arcopia freeze-dried pure fruit smoothies in three varieties and like we, we made them here and then found uh, facilities where they don't have carbon tax, where electricity is ten times cheaper, where they can actually grow tropical fruits like we can't in Canada. And then pesticide tested, heavy metal test, moisture test, microbiological test, Canada compliance, fully retailable. Um, Essentially, this smoothie, what we retail it for, is less than I can produce it myself for my family in my own machine. So again, you can purchase this cheaper than you can make it for if you buy all your equipment and don't factor that in and um, do it yourself, right? And, you know, same quality and then all of the extra stuff, consistency, uh, it's essentially an indefinite shelf life packaged in mylar oxygen absorbing packet but uh, unfortunately uh, many things I couldn't figure out how to turn into a business so these machines what we ended up doing now instead of our poundage of food because it takes a lot like I guess today I did a test batch just now where is it oh right here so I did uh, a tuna fish, cooked tuna fish. Here's a displayer from years ago, 2016 likely I did most displays just to show people at trade shows. Unfortunately COVID uh, couldn't do any trade shows anymore, I was only able to do like two of them. But uh, And then canned can chicken, so a bag of canned chicken and we just buy uh, thinner mylar, this is just three mil barrier proof material for doing bulk until I have time to package it in like good mylar material, but just for our food storage for some things. But essentially, we kind of stopped doing the bulk of food, we started homesteading and realized like the amount of food we go through, there's no way a freeze dryer is going to keep up with our own. So, so we produce livestock and chickens and eggs and goats fruits and vegetables and uh, we ended up just kind of freeze drying herbs, spices, our own supplements and then the odd you know food product type of thing but let me walk you through a few things if you're completely new to freeze drying so this is some garlic that we grew I thought this was going to be our business some uh, raw organic hardneck music garlic and I just did cloves it takes a long time in the freeze dryer just to show people and then we crush it powder it and then we even put it in uh, capsules for our own supplements but unfortunately like for a business uh, so here's a hundred grams of our freeze dried organic garlic and we'd have to literally retail this for like minimum forty dollars and we're barely making any money at that and then at a in a health food store you know it would be next to this product which is a hundred grams of dehydrated imported garlic for four dollars and seventy five cents so it's kinda hard like this is 
I don't know, a hundred times better and has all the flavor and nutrition and you have to use way less, but it's a hard sell, you know, between dehydrated, you know, garlic powder. So it was really tough. We couldn't make a business out of it. So essentially for freeze drying, you're probably going to get a freeze dryer just for your family and yourself and your own food storage. So as a do it yourselfer. So uh, I'm actually in our freeze dry room that is like, I guess if I cleaned it up and got government involved to get certification, I could get the minimum certification to do retailable products. But again, there's no money in it. So because it's Canada, right? But if you're getting a machine, get the biggest one that you can to make each batch worth worth it. So if you get a tiny, a small machine, you're doing a batch anyway, you have to do maintenance on pumps and everything anyways, you need the same amount of oils and everything, get, get the biggest one that you can afford to do to make a batch count. So the large one, it, it does a fair bit of food in a batch, and you know it's a small one uses almost the same electricity as a large one so make make each batch count in in my freeze dryer room I actually wired it up and have shelvings ready to go for 10 harvest rate freeze dryers it was my thought until I learned uh, like literally higher quality product for a significantly cheaper price to Canadians and then with imported fruit we save uh, on food waste, so 90% shipping reduction because we have it freeze dried where it's grown and then bring it to Canada for Canadians. So 90% reduction in shipping cost. So we can essentially, uh, a berry one especially, the price of berries in the store, this is like we retail this for cheaper than the cost of berries on sale, okay, in a Canadian grocery store and solved food waste. But anyways, um, you're going to do this for yourself, but before you get a freeze dryer, you should be doing other things. So my wife and I got our medium freeze dryer and ran that thing every day for a, like a year when we first got it. So what we do is go to the grocery store, try to find deals, try to buy in bulk, try to buy wholesale, uh, even Purdue buying things off of local, uh, local farms like... Maybe these Saskatoon berries, I don't have it labeled if these are ours or what we purchased, Saskatoon berry powder. So we put Saskatoons in there, freeze dried them, powdered them, and like this could go in, in smoothies as well. But yeah, my initial thought was try to support the local economy, so I inquired with uh, some small producers and the cost was way too high to make any sort of business out of it. Um, but we try to find deals to put food away for ourselves. You come to the realization that you actually have to be a producer and produce things uh, in order to make this feasible, right? Because if you're buying buying food and like maybe there's a smoking deal and maybe it makes sense for some things, but we had to produce. So we'll do powdered or here's some yogurt we made. This is a massive bag of yogurt, no sugar added, and uh, this this would have actually the live yogurt culture freeze drying doesn't destroy any of the good good things so I could use this to make more yogurt these are freeze dried raw eggs from September 2016 so eggs that came out of our chicken coop we had an abundance I uh, cracked them open on the trays put them in and didn't even powder them. They just kind of powdered themselves. And protected in mylar, these are good for forever, right? Here's another 10 dozen raw eggs. Here's uh, whole Saskatoon berries that we picked, wild Saskatoon berries. And here's our uh, garden has caps, the whole has caps, so we could Put these in our morning breakfast or yogurt or whatever and uh, it's convenient but the, the cost of the food was free and it's ours and we know it's good so we freeze dried it for ourselves to make a business out of it uh, I can't see the prices ends up being too high and I'm not gonna work for 50 cents an hour right uh, it's just 
it doesn't work. So for manufacturing in a place like like Canada and the US when you see a food product it has to be an assembly line not much processing so for freeze drying you have to put in a tray and use this complicated machine so it's got a freezing chamber heating pads on here a vacuum pump the computer controller all sorts of things and it's time consuming and uses a lot of electricity whereas another product would be using oats or wheat and having it on an assembly line like toasting some wheat comes out the deep fryer goes into an automatic packaging and package 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 some you know uh, low production products is something that you can do in Canada uh, but another thing we do like that that is good for us is our like supplements that we do for ourselves so here is Ah, this is a bag of freeze-dried raw beef liver from a young steer. Okay, so it's freeze-dried and just left, it comes out in hard, uh, like, steaks. So this, whenever I want, I can put it in our crusher and get, put, get our veggie capsules and put it uh, in capsules. So for people that are short on iron or wanting a natural vi uh, multivitamin, this is what we do for ourselves. Uh, the freeze dryer is worth it just for that, honestly. But um, some other things that we've done, I'll just walk you through here. I did this at for the like two trade shows we went to before uh, the government shut down for the health crisis. Uh, powdered turkey, pork meatballs, pierogies, ravioli. Ginger, again, this is a herb and a supplement, so it's super convenient for us to cook with. So if we grow ginger in the greenhouse, I'll freeze dry it. And then it's, uh, I just, again, this package is for display only. It's clear, so it, over time, over the last five years, it, it lets moisture in, which will uh, wet this food and spoil the food. So um, some of the stuff I wouldn't even eat anymore. MREs, so uh, freeze-dried uh, granola, milk, and blackberries in that one. So you open it up, add water. So this is something that, uh, like the expensive part is the fruit, and the cheap part is this. So this is something you might see a North American company manufacture because it's cheap ingredients. It doesn't take long to freeze-dry. This is 10 pounds of mandarin oranges freeze-dried and powdered and this little thing 10 pounds like that's two of the boxes you get at Christmas time like that yeah Saskatoon berry powder uh, cheese bananas corn tuna fish farm onions or our garden onions ground meat you get the idea so it's great to put food away if you're gonna put a lot of food away and you're concerned about the quality of food then it's and you're a producer so if you have a farm or a large garden you buy a freeze dryer to do your own stuff. If you happen to be have the ability to get really good deals on good food, might be worth it for you. Let me walk you through the machine a bit. So it's uh, these things are expensive. These things are a basic machine with a oiled pump in Canada's five thousand five hundred dollars per machine. You want extra trays? That's extra. With my pump. Uh, they have a new one called an oilless pump that's $2,500 US, I think. So it's very expensive, but it also requires maintenance as well, like you have to redo seals and things. So I didn't feel it's worth it. Now because vac these al aluminum vacuum pumps aren't really meant for moisture, there's a lot of maintenance to them. Way back in the day, uh, there was an older fellow in the States, I bought this... Uh, filtering system from for each of the oil pumps and it works very good so I freeze dry it like you didn't have it on just a standard pump and then I flick a switch and a valve 
and it runs through and filters out all the oil and accumulates any of the moisture that the, was in the pump and then I can release that, add a tiny bit more oil, switch it back to the next freeze dry process. So this saved me a lot of time and it works better than, than uh, you know, an oilless pump. You know, it's still messy. I just had to redo all of the pump seals and uh, give them a good cleaning and parts were local for that and if I do that all myself so it wasn't too bad. Uh, there's been some problems with machines, some sealing issues. I've had a computer go bad. This is an older machine where the computer's underneath so it has moisture. So I have this little drip edge thing on it to protect that. Uh, another one, I had wiring issues for the heating elements on the trays and I was able to rewire that and fix that myself without having to buy an expensive part. So it's not a cheap thing to do. But what you do get in the end is, you know, the highest quality food product on planet Earth or your, the highest quality supplements on planet Earth that you can make yourself. And you can actually put some food away for uh, hard times. So while you do have electricity in the power grid and, uh, you know, carbon tax and, and things are only, you know, bend over and take it not kill you type of thing and you can still afford to do put some food away um, they're good for that but if we lose power or electricity gets too expensive then these machines will probably just uh, sit because it gets too expensive and I'll be raw raw eggs raw meat raw fruit raw vegetables beet crops store or uh, root crops like beets and carrots and potatoes storing those old school in a root cellar so I'm an old school guy, uh, old school is kind of the best school, smoker, dehydrator, uh, chicken coop, production, feed storage, amend your garden soil, build a root cellar, uh, get racking for storing potatoes and onions and carrots and things, maybe a walk-in cooler. Those are some things that I would actually do if before I got a freeze dryer. I would do some simple things. Make yourself a big solar dehydrator or something. Now, here's the difference between dehydrated and, so this is an old display again I did for a trade show, but this is dehydrated apple slices versus freeze dried apple. So this destroyed well over half of the nutrition in the apple and this retained 98% of the nutrition in the apple. Now again, this is an old display, like six, seven years old. Uh, so the apple's a little bit spongy, it's not crispy anymore, but, uh, and this too, so I wouldn't eat these, but it still retained its color, shape, everything. It's just because of the clear packaging, it'll let, let a little bit of moisture in. But I would start with dehydrator, because the freeze dryer is so, so expensive, and work your way up to this. We had looked at some large like really really big commercial machines and one of the cheaper ones was about a half a million dollars Canadian and uh, for where we live you know uh, fruits and vegetables is something I wanted to put away so we don't grow those or have a lot here and it's that cost of running that machine is astronomical with the you know the governments that we have you can't manufacture things in in Canada. Uh, you can maybe a little bit better in the United States but it's getting bad there too so most productions go in, going overseas. But uh, for doing things yourself and your family if you have a big family and you're producing things you know highly recommend. These things are super noisy so I made made its own room in our own packaging and at our farm and keep the doors closed right uh, they give off a lot of heat because they use a lot of electricity. So you essentially have, you're running a reef refrigeration to get this down to like minus 37 degrees Celsius or something in the chamber. And then you're running one, two, three, four, five, six heating pads to warm the food at the same time as running this vacuum pump all at the same time. So all that's going to give off a lot of heat, use a lot of electricity, and it's very noisy as well. The vacuum pumps, doesn't matter what pump you get there, it's a noisy procedure. So I wouldn't even have this in my house anywhere, even in a soundproof room. It's so noisy, let alone two going. Like I, I put earplugs uh, back when I was 
uh, had these going 24-7. Uh, I'd have earplugs in to do all my packaging and things. But you need a lot of things for freeze drying. So it's not just the freeze dryer. It is mylar material you need, like barrier proof material. Our products are made out of six mil, uh, or I think it's six and a half mil, 150 micron thick uh, barrier proof packaging. And then for our bulk stuff, temporary stuff, I just use three mil mylar and I'm careful with it that I don't puncture anything. And then you need oxygen absorbers, and then you need an impulse bag sealer or a hair straightener or something to seal up the mylar. When you're using oxygen absorbers, you don't need to vacuum seal it. Uh, you get no extra benefit from vacuum sealing. Well, you might get a little extra air out, but it's not worth it for that. But all said and done, it's actually easier and quicker and better than canning. So we do a lot of canning or especially used to do a lot of canning as our food preservation method um, canning the jars are breakable heavy have the water content and the heat process from canning will destroy half of the nutrition in your food so if i was to i don't know can garlic under heat to get a seal on the jar i'm going to destroy a lot of that good stuff in raw garlic right our smoothies are raw fruit this is raw garlic, this is raw ginger root. So this is, you get a lot more nutrition doing this over canning and dehydrating. So that's one massive benefit. This is light, so this is, um, you know, if I was, if this was ravioli or something in a, like this weighs nothing freeze dried, but this ravioli in a can takes up a lot of space. If it's in a glass jar, it's breakable and your canning doesn't last as long. Uh, dehydrated foods, properly done and packaged, you'll maybe get five years out of dehydrated food. Um, canning, roughly the same, right? So if we can garden beans, they're only gonna be crisp for not even a year. They'll be edible for many, you know, a few years after that, but it'll be mushy. But if I freeze dry garden beans, it's there once it's in that mylar, I can expect that those beans to be good nutritional real food, losing no nutritional value for the rest of my life, essentially. So if you're doing a lot anyways, like one year we did a whole bunch of canning and weren't able to eat it all. So I've got some old canning that I just have to empty out and, and give to the chickens, right? So all that effort that we did, as opposed to this freeze drying, like some of this stuff is six, seven, eight years old already, right? Um, that we did, Saskatoon berries. These are good forever. So if I can Saskatoon berries, forgot about it in the root cellar, and then I'd have to feed it to the chickens. Whereas this, it's, it's like putting fresh food in a time capsule. So that's one big, big benefit. Now, if you're thinking about going into business freeze drying, uh, there's a few things I have to tell you about that. So expensive machines, limited production, right? So if, for, for instance, smoothies, um, I went to facilities that are massive. They have the million dollar machines. They have all the certifications and things. And um, they can do it for a price that's affordable enough. People will actually buy a smoothie. But for other smoothie companies, they just have a massive tub, put like a whole bunch of banana chunks in and stuff blend it up in a massive thing and like squirt it into whatever container it is or if it's a frozen smoothie they can do that almost on an assembly line and cut and package it up quick put it in a freezer whereas this you can't do this on an assembly line for for a smoothie for us for me to do this smoothie it's going to be over two days in in there because fruit has a lot of moisture content like anywhere from 80 to 94 percent moisture so you can only do so much fruit in there and it's a long process and then it comes out hard and then it's crushed into a powder anyways if you're thinking about going into business with it you can only do limited production and it's costly but what you do end up is with the highest quality food product on earth like our garlic uh, I thought would be an excellent business 
as long as people are willing to pay for all of those input costs and to have the highest quality thing. Now with the economy, I saw this garlic powder right in the health food store. Most people are going to buy this because they don't know the difference and nobody gives a crap, right? So I kind of switched to our own production is just for us. Now, unfortunately, as an entrepreneur, you want to give people what they want. So do people want to get healthy with garlic? You, do they want freeze-dried organic garlic supplements that are really expensive? Well, most people can't afford that. What do people want? As an entrepreneur, Skittles, that's what they want. So many people that get some freeze dryers in North America, they want to provide customers what they want. And what they want are Skittles. This was our uh, company before uh, there was a trademark issue with Eden Foods. But anyways, Skittles, that's what people want. So they, people, or somebody will buy bulk Skittles, stick them in the freeze dryer. It's a quick process. It, instead of chewy, it makes them crunchy. And seems like a big, big time waste of electricity. Like these are terrible for you, all the cancer causing uh, additives and things. And But that's what people want. So here's some gummy bears. They explode. It's kind of neat. So instead of a uh, small gummy, it blows up and it's crunchy. And ice cream, or actually this is our freeze-dried garden potato leek soup. But uh, freeze-dried ice cream looks the same. Astronaut ice cream. That's what people want. People don't eat healthy, the majority of the public. So if you do get it, want to get into business, there's maybe a demand for wasting some energy and selling people some Skittles, but uh, or if you can have a market, if like if you have some he uh, healthy people that have some resources to spend for their health and and supplements like this. Another thing, people buy freeze dryers just for their marijuana. So in Canada, marijuana is legalized and the government just taxes the crap out of it. But uh, for marijuana drying, you'll get a better quality marijuana product just because of the freeze dry process. Just like food, it keeps 98% of the nutrition. It'll likely keep 98% of the THC or whatever. I don't know much about uh, marijuana. Um, but so really think about what you're doing F for our off farm stuff. I might do some in-person sales only for some from for some supplements and freeze-dried liver things or whatever. But for the majority of our off-farm stuff, because it's Canada, electricity's high, there's a carbon tax, you can't manufacture shit in Canada. Uh, our off-farm stuff is uh, goat, whether it's a live goat, half goat. Uh, whether I butcher that and sell it in person, so no government regulations. Uh, chickens, chicken eggs, uh, fresh stuff out of the greenhouse, uh, flowers and things like that. Something that we can grow for limited cost, doesn't have high costs, uh, and then I can still sell it to a person uh, for a price that they can kind of afford. So if I uh, for livestock, for instance, if I took a livestock animal and I butchered it up, uh, did everything, uh, seasoned it nicely, cooked it nicely, freeze dried it for two days, took it out, packaged it in mylar with an oxygen absorber, and you know, I have to ask ten dollars for this little package. And again, people, people don't realize, so here's some meatballs, meatballs. All the moisture is out of them so this weighs nothing people are like what do you mean that's ten dollars for meatballs right because there's no moisture in there it's like what do you mean there's a pound of fruit in there right this little tiny package a pound of fruit without the water right so it's a it's a hard sell for for people and it's too expensive so off-farm stuff is no production because it's Canada raw direct in person. No middlemen, no distributors, no nothing. Direct in person and moving forward the majority of the population that's kind of what you can afford. And fresh stuff like it's still nothing beats eating 
a fresh banana. So out of the greenhouse, freeze dried b banana chips. Excellent, but I had to cut them up, put them in a tray, freeze dry them two days, take them out, package them in mylar, and then you get that. And all that electricity cost and my time and everything. Whereas just banana off the, the, the plant in the greenhouse and eat it, right? Another thing that was nice when it, we had a lot of chickens in the summer and we had eggs coming out our ears, the overflow of stuff that we produce that we didn't sell or give away and you end up with like like hundreds of dozens of eggs, right? Well, when you have the freeze dryer, it's, it's simply crackle the eggs. Instead of the, anything going to waste, you can use anything that would otherwise go to waste, freeze dry it and, and put it away so you don't waste any food and that's food for the future. So, so if I have predators coming in or I lose all my chickens or something and we have no eggs or something or and they stop laying in the winter, we, uh, we will have powdered eggs. And powdered eggs are very good for convenience in our cooking. So if we're baking something or, I don't know, making cookies or something, it's very convenient. It's a tablespoon of the freeze-dried egg powder in the cookie batter or whatever, and it's the same thing as a fresh egg. Things like uh, scramb cooked scrambled egg MRE, we did, but it's not quite the same texture as a nice, moist, fresh scrambled egg. So I just freeze dry raw eggs, add water to it, and then I make scrambled eggs with that. And it's like you can't tell the difference, right? From eight year old freeze dried eggs to a freshly laid egg. It's the same thing. Okay, hopefully I didn't ramble on too long, but I got a lot of thoughts in my head to try to get out in <laughs> one stream. But uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a freeze dryer. Let me know your thoughts if you have a freeze dryer. Let me know if that changed your mind on if you're planning on purchasing a freeze dryer or not. But uh, very cool machine. Like this machine creates the highest quality food product on earth for the longest storage. Uh, back before they came out with the the different uh, the jab for people that's not an actual you know traditional vaccine. I remember them talking about well, they, the vaccine, it has to be stored at like minus 60 degrees Celsius or lysification uh, or freeze drying. So I was like, cool, this is, maybe this will tell people learn about freeze drying because they have to freeze dry the vaccine, powder it just like this to add water to it to inject people. But then they came out with that artificial vaccine and then they were injecting people outside my local PV Mart out of a camper it's very cool what you can do. Highest quality foods, highest quality supplements, long-term food storage, uh, solve food waste. Uh, once you have one of these, you don't can very much. The only thing we can is pickles and maybe salsa and jams because you want, it's kind of a, almost a texture thing, right? You have uh, fresh dill pickles and it's relatively easy to do. Uh, everything else? is actually freeze-dried for the the storing of anything. Herbs are excellent. Uh, I guess if you're into marijuana, excellent. Making your own supplements. Uh, you know, I'll eat raw liver off of a, a freshly butchered cow with some maple syrup on it, just a little bit, but it's definitely not my favorite taste. I'll choke it down. Um, but for to get that good goodness in you to freeze dry powder and capsule. It's great for that. So essentially, after you do the other things, after you're producing your own chicken eggs, after you have a dehydrator, learn how to do that. After you have the canning stuff, learn how to can. Uh, after you have a big garden and have your own production coming in that you're not going to go try to buy food and to freeze dry, but you grow it so it's almost free, just your time um, to do it. Then you get a freeze dryer. So if you got the money, if you got the space, the time to commit to it, like all this stuff takes a lot of your own personal time as well. I'd hi highly recommend it. So I don't, I don't have any affiliation with Harvest Rate or any promo codes for you, but. Uh, I believe I bought my these two from juicerville.ca. You can get them direct from Harvest Right. There's actually a few more companies coming out with some home freeze dryers. Um, 
I don't know enough about that. And then my buddy Nate at CanadianPreparedness.com, uh, I understand, also carries freeze dryers. And he's a good guy, the guy you want to support. So uh, that's where you can get them. And happy freeze drying. Thanks for watching that.